In this demo, we're going to be getting data from Oracle's Hotel Dev and putting that data into Kafka. And then we'll put that data from Kafka into Hotel Test. Let's start off by looking at the data that I have in Hotel Dev. My table people here is pretty straightforward. It has an ID column that's an auto-incrementing primary key. Name is just a string. Deleted is a Boolean column that I'm using to indicate soft deletion. Zero means it's not deleted. One means it is deleted. Created at indicates when the record was first inserted, and updated at is a timestamp that shows when the record was last updated. So if we're going to put the data into hotel test, let's take a look and see what the data looks like right now in hotel test. And I'll just select star from people here. And we can see that the table doesn't currently exist in hotel test. For us to move the data from hotel dev into Kafka, we need to create a source worker in Kafka Connect. And to do that, we use a configuration file. This is our source configuration file. It's pretty straightforward, but let's talk through it really quick. There are three lines here at the top that tell Kafka the name of the, the worker, what type of worker it is, in this case, a JDBC source worker, and where we're going to put the data that it finds. These six lines tell Kafka Connect how to first find the data and how to identify updated rows or new rows. Our query is very straightforward, select star from people, and then we're using the updated at column as a timestamp to identify updated records, and then we're using the ID column as an incrementing column to identify new records. We're checking for new data every 1,000 milliseconds or one second, and then this last line is an Oracle configuration option. These last three lines tell Kafka Connect how to connect to the database. It's a JDBC connection string with the host name, username, and password. And I've clearly elided the password here. We're going to use that config file to create a new source worker in Kafka Connect. And we do that through a REST API call. And that's what I have at the top of the screen. At the bottom of the screen, I have a small command line interface that's going to show us any data that gets written to that idea.people topic where all of our data is going to end up. It's running now, but it's not showing us any data because no data exists in the topic yet. For us to put data there, we have to start our worker. So let's do that now. Once the worker started, it takes about a second for data to appear. And there it is. And you'll see it looks just like it does at the database. We have an ID value, a name value, deleted, and we also have created at and updated at. Those last two are showing as long integers but they still represent the same timestamp value that we saw in the Oracle database. With our source worker now up and running, we can insert new data into hotel dev, and we should see that appear in the topic. First, though, we have to remember to commit the record. And once we do, it appears quite quickly in our Kafka topic. We can also then change that record. And once we commit that, we'll see that appear as well. Notice here that both states of that record appear in the Kafka topic. Remember earlier that I mentioned that Kafka topics are immutable. Once I've written a record to it, I can't delete it or change it. So I have both states of the data here. This is a fantastic way to see the history of data changes in your database in a Kafka topic, because you can see every state that the data row has ever been in. With our data now properly being sent from Hotel Dev to Kafka, we want to take that data from Kafka and send it to Hotel Test. For that, we need a sync worker. And for that, we need a configuration file, just like we did for the source. This is our sync configuration file. It has a name. These next lines around connecting to the database and the sync connector are very similar to what we saw before. We have a topic that we're getting the data from. That's our idea.people topic that we've been looking at up to now. And then these ones are unique to our sync configuration. We're telling our sync worker, here's how you insert data to the database. Instead of just inserting a new row, do an upsert, which means you insert a new row if that row doesn't exist, or you update the row if it already does exist. So we have to have a way of identifying if the row exists or not, and for that we're using our ID column, our primary key that auto-increments in the hotel dev database. This tells Kafka to create the table people if it doesn't already exist in hotel test. Just as we did with our source worker, we create our sync worker by taking that config file and putting it into the REST API. Down at the bottom, I have hotel test, which, if you remember correctly, doesn't have a people table at the time. Let's go ahead and put that config worker into our REST API and see what happens. So if we query from people in hotel test, And there's our data, exactly the same way as it appears in Hotel Dev. 
I want to point out that first row with the ID of 21. Note that it has the name of updated, which is what we changed that row to in Hotel Dev. Thanks to the upsert functionality, uh, Cock was able to identify that that row had changed from new record to updated and applied the latest change to our table here. With our source and sync working, let's make some changes in Hotel Dev and see if they appear in Hotel Test. I'll quickly update the deleted column to set it to one for one of our records to show that it has been soft deleted. If I select from people, I see that that change has now been moved over to Hotel Test. But what happens if I delete a row for real? I can see that the row has been removed from our hotel dev table, but it still exists in our hotel test table. And that is one of the interesting real world complications that a demo doesn't quite capture. Demos are great for showing off some of the easy fun to do stuff, but they don't really dig into the, the real world problems that we face every day. So let's wrap up the demo and talk about some of those real world problems.